Welcome to Power Search. In this tutorial, I continue with the families for heritage and historical buildings. This time, the focus is on adaptive families and how these can help with repetitive details like this arc. The tutorial begins by displaying the arc that I will recreate. Watch through the complete tutorial and you will notice this is actually quite a simple build and a great alternative to model in place families in a project. Use the generic model adaptive template to start the build. I will leverage the power of adaptive components to fast track the build and increase accuracy. This will host the family where I will nest a combination of smaller families. For this reason, I save the family with the name host. Before any modeling starts, set out a grid using reference planes. These planes are used to map out the adaptive semi-ellipse, which will form the basis of the arc structure. Make sure you check out the other videos in this series. You can find these on the channel profile. They expose the Revit form tools for creating all kinds of intricate designs. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments below and hit that subscribe button for more content. Back to the arc. Once the setouts are established, use the draw tools to create the shape. and then finalize this part of the tutorial by dividing the shape into equal parts using the divided path tool. Next, I create the main stone that will be arrayed across the arc. This is a simple extrusion sketched out in the shape of a trapezium. Complemented with a triangular void extrusion on top to give it a tapered look. And to emphasize this point again, it's so much easier to handle this in the family editor to build a simple extrusion like the one on screen within your project as a model in place element will take a lot more gymnastics. You have all of the project views to navigate and a whole model in and around this object, which makes it difficult to maneuver. At this point, this is nothing more than a simple extrusion. We need to nest this into the generic model adaptive template to make it adaptive. We need to nest this into an adaptive template and manipulate it there to make it flexible. Open another generic model adaptive template and host a point on the intersection of the default reference planes. And make this point adaptive. 
This will give the standard stone an adaptive reference node when the nested components are assembled together in the host family. Pay attention to the adaptive node orientation. With the family now nested into the host, the standard stone can be hosted onto the arc. Snap the nodes together using the face placement tool. And then array the stones along the arc using the repeated pattern tool. The start and end stones are not required, so these can be deleted. The middle stone can be replaced by the keystone. The keystone was created using the same method as the standard stone. It contains more detail on its top face, which can simply be created using the revolve tool. The bulk of the family is now complete. Only a couple of details remain. Now I create a simple parametric profile family. It is also important to note that this is a face-based family, which means that it can easily be hosted onto any work plane, including notes, within the host family. Once the parameters have been made, it's important to flex these to ensure that they work as they should. This is also nested into the host family and hosted onto the first node of the divided path element. I then use the profiles instance parameters to adjust the size as required.
This is then simply extruded along the arc. Be sure to tab through to the reference line as you can't extrude along the divided path. The penultimate step is to create a void extrusion, which will cut out a section of wall once this family is loaded into the project and placed on a wall face. For this purpose, it is important to check the family parameter values where it reads cut with voids when loaded. Now in the project, ensure that you have set up your views to help you place the family correctly. Here I use a combination of plans, sections and scope boxes to limit the amount of visible detail on screen at the time of placement. Use named reference planes to help with placement. To place the family, simply find it in the project browser, right click and select create instance and ensure that place on face is selected. Once the family is placed, use the cut tool to apply the void. Here, the void depth needs to be edited to reveal the detail behind. And this is a great time to show you how we can use the model to extract the information that we need for our family. Here, I go to a sectional view where I extract via a dimension the wall thickness required to cut through. I've left this segment in the tutorial because I think it's important to call out how easy families are to edit with the family editor, as opposed to editing in place families. The hidden detail is now visible, but the family still needs to be edited to remove the block of wall here. That's the end of the video. I hope that you learned something new 
and that you found it interesting. If you did, consider subscribing and hit the like button and drop a comment. And I'll see you in the next video.